Good afternoon. Um, I'll be talking about uh, a new great briefing paper, if you don't mind, today, uh, which is on the global threat of crisis in developing countries taking stock and taking actions. Um, in the BRICS, uh, so the larger emerging countries, is that there are some uh, recoveries taking place or some uh, they are emerging out of the worst, and that industrial production is increasing in, uh, in most of the bigger emerging countries. Commodity prices have also rebounded. It might also be a sign of, um, of some sort of that the worst might be over in the global economy. And note that the fuel and copper prices and metal prices have been particularly volatile over the years. <coughs> but how have low income countries fared? How are they positioned? <coughs> we are currently undertaking uh, a phase two of the monitoring work on the effects of the global cancer crisis on a number of poor countries, which is funded by uh, the Department of International Development and the Swedish Development Agency, Agency SIGA. We are continuing to monitor how these, uh, these 10 countries are being affected. Uh, we're thinking about transmission mechanisms, such as private capital flows, trade, remittances and aid. And think about the macro effects in terms of growth, uh, reserves uh, and fiscal space, and also monitor their policy responses. Two weeks ago, uh, where, where um, the 10 countries were presenting uh, their preliminary evidence, um, and I will be uh, just reporting on that. A report uh, with more details will be on our website uh, tomorrow. In terms of uh, private financial flows, so far um, what we've seen is that by the end of 2008, portfolio flows have been withdrawn quite quickly from countries like UK, for instance. Um, but there weren't that many signs that portfolio flows were actually increasing. FDI plans were postponed by the end of the last year. Yes, FDI to poor countries, including Africa, had, it, had increased to record levels, but towards the end of the year, some countries, well, some countries saw um, negative growth rates. And it's possible that, um, that there will be some declines also in those countries um, uh, this year. In terms of trade, there have been large effects. Um, and I think an important area here is price. So commodity prices have, have uh, decreased. Therefore, um, trade values have increased dramatically. And uh, so therefore, commodity exporters, such as uh, DRC, Zambia, and uh, copper, they've seen the effects, but also other exporters, like uh, Sudan or uh, other mining exporters, they've seen huge decreases in export revenues, and um, uh, particularly through the, the price effect. Remittances, um, a number of countries have, have reported declines. Uh, Kenya, uh, I think that, that's been the Debate for quite some time now that the reasons have declined uh, by 10% in the year to the first half of 2009, and Bolivia as well, and some other countries. There are also exceptions like Bangladesh, which is still quite a lot of remittances. In terms of aid, the countries didn't um, report a full out of aid so far, um, partly perhaps due to programming that's, that's fixed for a number of years or at least a long period. But they did report an increase in multilateral engagement. IMF uh, activity has increased substantially below the income countries. Likely growth effects. Um, again, it's very different, uh, mixed picture. Uh, some countries have taken enormous slowdown this, this year. Uh, countries like uh, Cambodia and DRC that, that face slowdowns of up to 7 percentage point compared to uh, a year ago, or compared to what otherwise would have been the case. From programs. Uh, then there are some countries that see some moderate effects uh, compared to what otherwise would be the case, 3 to 4%, such as Kenya. And then there are also countries that are not so much affected. Uh, in Bangladesh, it's on the other ones in the category. Poverty and employment effects. We did see employment effects coming through already quickly in countries like Cambodia, where we have a massive uh, employment losses uh, in, in the garment sector, as well as in other sectors. 
um, in Zambia, where uh, a quarter of the mining jobs went, the DSC, where reportedly 200,000 jobs went. And of course, there's likely to be some lag effects, whether any um, recovery, also in OECD countries, by the way, and the recovery is likely to be um, also important in the tens. Um, and there, um, there's likely to be a possible increase in, uh, in poverty because of uh, slowdowns in, in growth. And we can think about the slowdown in growth coupled with um, some income uh, elasticities or poverty elasticities with respect to income. And then you can predict some uh, reduction in the, uh, or increase in the number of the poor. There are also questions that were being raised two weeks ago at the meeting. In terms of the recovery, um, if there is going to be a recovery that is sustained in the developed countries, will low income countries see a lack of funds? We didn't actually see a big upturn, or it may indicate that suggested there was an upturn in low income countries, apart maybe from some increase in, in commodity prices. There were questions about uh, policy practices. A country like Sudan had, had um, posited on the basis of record oil prices that were there last year. $47 per barrel, uh, going into the budget for, for the next year. And of course, oil prices have, have declined rapidly. That, that's got a hole in their financial accounts, which uh, fiscal accounts, which is a, uh, has implications for a number of things and has non economic implications as well. But why are they doing that? Um, of course, lots of countries do it, developed countries do it as well, but they're not as bad as they get these days. Um, there's increased activity uh, from the IMF. They respond quickly, they were in a position to do so. Um, is the role of the IMF now changing? Can we see it in a different light now than a couple of years ago? And <coughs> interestingly, in some countries, regional trade was actually holding up. In Uganda, for instance, uh, regional exports uh, pushed some of the impacts uh, from a decline in, uh, in the north south trade, uh, the coffee exports and so on. And they were exporting to the, the neighbors, which was uh, pushing the impact. But also, some structural issues came back. Mostly now thinking about uh, cyclical issues, uh, thinking about a downturn and upturn, but there were, of course, structural issues that, that came through. Um, for instance, Cambodia lost a lot of its garment exports, but Bangladesh didn't uh, lose lots of garment exports to the US, for instance. And a lot of Chinese FDI uh, was withdrawn from Cambodia. Now that a recovery might be taking place in the coming two years, is Cambodia well positioned to take, to take uh, advantage of that? Or perhaps not? Is, it, is this going to be a structural effect on the, for their economy? Uh, the same for Zambia and DRC. Uh, Zambia is in a better competitive position with respect to copper exports than is uh, DRC. Um, any upturn is, is the um, uh, is DRC uh, with a very structural effect as well. We then move to uh, taking action. Now two small Italy and Ireland. Um, 
which will mean declines in older, older UNI ratios. Another country uh, like the Netherlands um, is sticking by its, uh, its otherwise very admirable uh, high older to UNI rates, ratios of 0.7%, um, plus 0.1% for the environment. But of course, because the UNI is declining, ODA is uh, declining as well. And uh, that might be used in cost as well. And so the other agencies are reprogramming. Re uh, cross countries, uh, so to those countries that are more vulnerable, all within countries. <coughs> in terms of non threat responses, there has been a quite a fast uh, response from the non threat system. There's been a tripling in IMF lending to low income countries. Uh, the World Bank's IBRD to two types of richer European countries has tripled up as well. In terms of developing countries' responses, there have been fewer. Of course, they haven't seen the knee-jerk reaction of going into protectionist stances either, at least not that many, which is a good sign. Um, but they haven't also increased their policy response to Hamas. Uh, some countries are, are doing it and uh, helping out. Um, there are monetary steps um, and some fiscal steps, though limited. So, although it still means that um, if you don't have a fiscal step, uh, or fiscal, new fiscal policy might still mean that you have an increased fiscal deficit. Um, so that, that means still in some way of pushing the impact. In terms of taking actions, there are two slides. Um, first of all, it's important that, um, particularly this week when the G20 leaders meet, that they ensure that uh, there's a recovery, uh, and a sustained recovery, and that it's not just recovery for, um, for developed countries, but it also reaches developing countries. And I think for that to take, play, take place, it's important to keep monitoring, to understand what is happening, and to be able to respond to uh, new information as it comes in. Uh, it's important to sustain stimuli, at least not to withdraw them rapidly, and to uh, think about a rain a rainbow stimulus, as, as we've suggested before, to um, uh, that part of the stimulus is actually also going to developing countries, particularly if it constraints to consumers and live in, uh, most of them live in developing countries, they might need a stimulus to help kickstart growth in their countries as well as uh, global growth. They could be part of the solution to the current financial crisis. Uh, think about the new trade package and aid for trade should play a, pro a prominent role. And of course, developing countries need to help as well. Uh, most of the responsibility of, uh, of the recovery, uh, if, it, if it is going to reach uh, developing countries, lies with developing countries themselves. So they need to be well positioned to take advantage of any recovery that will take place. Now, it's also important for the 20 leaders to uh, prevent such extreme <coughs> volatility death. That can be harmful and can lead to uh, long run negative effects, maybe in Cambodia, for instance. Uh, for that to happen, we need to improve global regulation and increase trumpet transparency, um, we need to reduce the prosecutability of global financial flows, and there's been a suggestion to, to think about varying capital adequacy ratios and to change them over the cycle so you can lend a bit more to, to uh, see those kinds of needed in better. Uh, and it's important to think about that incentive structures are right for, uh, for um, the financial systems, that they reward economic rates of return, not just financial rates of return. Often it's a good hand hand, but it's not always the case. And the flip side of this, so when, when there was poor financial regulation, global imbalances uh, were emerging, because of the work on the other side, to try and reduce the global imbalances uh, by solving the market coordination failures and try to leverage uh, capital from, from surplus countries to low-income countries where the returns could be very high. Then, in terms of uh, taking action for, for sort of global compact, which is to think about uh, making sure that uh, future growth is resilient to crisis. And here, there are a number of suggestions as well. I think here it's important to think about uh, 
the system is set up to provide global public goods to deal with global prices. One global public good that's important here is a government global public good. And here we need stronger coordinating roles for the UN G20 rather than G8, and we need stronger trade financial and environmental rules. There needs to be adequate resources and facilities for the IMF uh, and the World Bank and other global institutions for countries to deal with crisis. There's new roles uh, for technical assistance, for instance, the IMF, which developing countries, many other countries have to them. And uh, there are new roles for IFIs to think about global balances. Of course, there also needs to be government reforms, uh, which will go hand in hand. It's important to think uh, about the future that it's not just a financial crisis that, 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 that we, uh, the world's facing, there are other crises as well. And um, there's an environmental crisis looming. And it's important to think about adequate climate finance in addition to traditional order to safeguard the um, environmental global public goods. And there needs to be support for developing countries to cope with the uh, crisis with institutional policy support uh, so that they can also prevent uh, the, the worst uh, of the impacts. And um, that, of course, depends on what developing countries want. Um, uh, but it's, and it comes back to a base question about how to diversify economies and so that they're resilient to the crisis. That's, those measures together, um, we suggest, is, uh, it, it is a sort of neutral compact to think about crisis resilient growth and might help um, in the future um, even with crisis and might help developing countries to weather the storm better. Thank you very much indeed. Now, now, Thank you. Now, one of the things that's